Hi, I'm Paul Moniz with Albert Einstein College of Medicine. We're joined today by Catherine Critien, who's an internist from Washington, D.C., and a very popular person on social media. She started the group Mothers in Medicine, and her Twitter handle is at Mother in Med. Catherine, you started this group back in 2008. What was the unmet need at that time? Well, at the time, I had a daughter, and I was a new mother and a junior faculty member and didn't feel I had the support that I was looking for in terms of going through this experience of juggling motherhood and being a physician as well. So I looked on the web to see what was available and I really couldn't find anything that, that met that need. And so I decided to start a blog of my own and recruited a bunch of physician mothers to write with me. What did this group really do for you on a personal level? Well, their support and one thing great about social media is it provides online communities when you might not have that in real life. So we support each other, and I think it offers a service to lots of young women out there who are going through the same things. How many mothers uh, who are physicians are part of this blog or interacting or contributing? How much has it grown? It varies, um, varies a bit. We started with about 18, and we still have sometime, somewhere between 18 and 20 contributors, and they're through all stages of training. So we have a pre-med student as well as a medical student and a few residents and attendings. So one question that anyone watching this will undoubtedly have is wondering how you balance a practice and being a mom of three children ages one to seven and still finding time for social media. How do you do it? Well, priorities. One is family comes first um, before a job and then social media comes last. But if I do have time, I can do that and, and be engaged with that. Do you think that you've uh, improved your time management skills as a result of being on social media because it requires you to be a better time manager? Well, certainly being a mother and a physician <laughs> increases your time management skills tremendously. So I don't know how much it increased because of social media use, but it's, it's helpful that you can do social media on the fly, like on your phone or quickly while you're doing something else. So I mean, you can multitask it too. So you're here today at Einstein to speak with some of our faculty members, both at Einstein and at our clinical affiliates. One of the things we're hearing a lot from doctors is just a hesitancy to jump in, whether they're concerned about HIPAA, their own personal privacy, or in some cases, the institutions that they're working for actually have rules against them engaging on social media so they can't even access these particular sites. For those doctors that are curious but gun shy, what would you like to say to them? Well, I can understand some caution, and definitely caution is important because we've seen what can happen in cases where people throw caution to the wind. But to still go forth, because I think it can offer so much as long as we get past that, and to think of a place to grow and to learn how to act professionally online and to model this for our trainees, I think that's really important too. So I would say just go slow, but do go forward. Now, it's important to point out to our audience, if they don't know this, that you are not only um, a physician, an internist, but you're also a researcher, and you've done research on doctors in social media. And what you found uh, overall in terms of doctors online is, unfortunately, um, there's some unprofessionalism going on. You were just published in JAMA um, in the March edition, I believe it was March 21st. Tell us what your research found. Well, we partnered with the Federation of State Medical Boards to look at what state boards were seeing in terms of physician online unprofessional content. And we really just wanted to capture what's, being, what's going on out there in the state boards and what's happening as a result of it. So we found where of responding boards, which was about 71% of the boards, uh, most of them had reported instances where they found physicians doing unprofessional content Such online. As such as most often inappropriate contact with patients or inappropriate prescribing, something like that. And as a result of that, licenses were either suspended, revoked, and sometimes. Um, so these are serious, serious consequences of these behaviors. Now your research um, did get a fair amount of publicity. On the flip side, some people said, wait a second, you know, the number of doctors who are being cited for unprofessional online conduct is really very, very, very small compared to the 65,000 
um, citations that this board has has thrown out over a lifetime uh, in its existence. So, you know, what do you say to some of the critics who are saying really the offline behavior of doctors really needs to be monitored more closely? Things like elevator talk and violating patient confidentiality in the hallways. Well, I think that it's really important to note the context of this and the fact that there are this great number of lifetime violations is what we included in our study because we wanted to put it in context. And in terms of overreacting, we're we're just reporting what's happening. We're not, you know, interpreting it in any way. So I feel we are just putting forth what's happening in state boards and contributing to the medical literature on that. Well, it's certainly very important to have as much research as possible. Despite some of your reservations, you're still very active in social media. And I'm just wondering what you found this has brought to you from a professional perspective. What have you gotten out of this as a professional? Some people may not know that I started in social media by personal blogging and I blogged for many years and as a result of that I think I became a much better writer because of it. So that was really important was developing my writing skills. And the other thing is it led to medical innovations for medical education. So I thought of using blogs for reflective writing which only came because I was so involved in blogging at the time. And the other thing is all the studies that have resulted from it. So it's it's really been great fertile ground to do research and to find out what's out there and what we can do with, with social media. There are a number of doctors who believe that telling a patient's story and really understanding the role of narrative medicine makes physicians better doctors. Do you believe that? I absolutely agree. I'm a huge fan of narrative medicine. In fact, I have a narr narrative medicine curriculum with the students that I teach at my institution. So I totally believe in stories and storytelling and that power to promote humanism and empathy. And I think social media can be a way to mediate this, but we have to do it respectfully and to respect patient privacy as well. Catherine, to people watching this who um, might want to get started, but they really are just trying to figure out what's the first step I should take, what advice would you offer them? You can lurk. So lurking is just a term. You're, you're just watching, you're observing. You don't have to post content online. You can just watch for a while before you're comfortable in posting anything and then maybe slowly slowly starting, but you don't have to jump right in and, and post a ton of things all at once. You can just watch from the sidelines. All right, excellent advice. Dr. Catherine Cretien, thanks for joining us, an internist from Washington, D.C. If you are not already, you can follow her by her Twitter handle, at Mother in Med. I'm Paul Moniz. Thanks for spending time with us.